Hey, welcome back to my second episode of how to get started with home automation. Now that you've purchased the Samsung Smart Things Hub and a few sensors and you're wanting to get started, I'm going to show you some ins and outs of the actual Smart Things app and some things that I set up and that I like and then go through how to set up your automations. Uh, just a real quick overview of how to set up your automations based on the sensors that I have. So let's get started. So here you are with uh, the home screen. This is uh, the favorites. Remember the favorites we're talking about? Uh, to go ahead and adjust those, you want to click on, it looks like three dots that are vertical, the top right, and then you click manage, manage favorites. And here you'll be able to star, what looks list, all the sensors that you want on your home screen. So for now, I just have the front door locked, uh, the garage door open and close, my home thermostat so I can look and see what the temperature is real quick and outside lights on or off. Uh, and then below that is your smart home monitor. When you first get started with the SmartThings app, it actually asks you the steps on how to get that all set up and how you want it to get turned on so it's armed away when you leave based on pressing sensors as well as being disarmed. So right now, since I'm home, it's disarmed. So now that you have all that set up and set up the way you want it, favorites is usually something that I set up that I want access to right off the bat. Um, and then you obviously have my home, which has all your sensors that you can get to. You can set up rooms. Uh, I don't necessarily use the rooms, but that will allow you to automate uh, based on pushing or tapping on the sensors itself, lights and, and so forth. Um, so that way, if you're like, okay, I want to, instead of scrolling through all the sensors you have, I can just go, okay, so, um, okay, whatever I want to automate is in outside. outside. And then that's the front door sensor. Um, whatever I want to automate is in the kitchen, so I can click on that. And I don't have any devices in there. As you can see, I don't really use it that much, but that might be useful for some people, so there you have it for that. Um, the next thing is, so SmartThings has a few, they don't really have a good way of uh, naming their automations. Uh, I think they're kind of an accumulation of um, apps that their customers have created as well as their development team but it's called, they're called smart apps. These are stock apps that they automatically put on the app itself that you can go through. So they kind of categorize it to how you think it would think about it. So they have a recommendation list. So kind of smart lights, smart lights, is probably the number one you're gonna use. That will automate your lights on and off or even switches, outlets. Then they have smart locks. So if you have, an, uh, if you have a Z-Wave or a Zigbee smart lock, you can set up that so that you give access and entry for your family members. And then they go on further, so they have safety and security, lights and switches, climate control and so forth. I'm not gonna read them all because you can read them yourself. But, uh, so let's go into lights and switches so I can show you what I'm talking about. So they have smart lights, like where it's all. Gentle wake up, which kind of dims your lights as you wake up. Uh, Alford workflow, which turn on your SmartThings powered lights and switches on directly from your Mac if you have a Macintosh. Um, a, mood, a mood cube uh, that kind of goes with SmartSense, multi-sensor. You basically have to have the right stuff for that. Um, then you have other things like energy management. So you got energy alerts. If you have, some of the switches have energy monitoring. So that way you can monitor how much power that switch is being used. And then they have an app called Something Left Open. Uh, that would be like an open closed sensor so that way you can click on that and you can set what's left open, how long it was open, um, and send them notifications. So if, uh, a good one for that is like a freezer door. So if you have kids and they go down and get their pizza or microwave pizza or Hot Pockets or whatever and then they have a tendency to leave the freezer door open, you can put a sensor there. And so when that door's open and it's open for say two minutes, it'll send you an alert for that. Um, thermostat window check, it will check, see if the thermostat turns on, if the windows are open, alerts you, or even turn off the thermostat. Um, smart windows, it compares the two temperatures inside outside, then sends an alert if the windows are open or closed. Um, you can automate those so that way, same thing with weather. But as you can see, the automations that they have for you already from the stock app, they're not the best, but they will definitely get you started. Um, as you heard me mention in the first video, I had mentioned uh, I had mentioned Core and Webcore. Those are definitely going to um, help you out even further. 
Uh, I use Core right now. I haven't quite transformed over to Web Core, but Core will help you jumpstart you into Web Core. So we'll get started with Core more further down the road here in the next video or so, but and then go to Web Core. But those are more, like I said, uh, if you didn't see in the first video, those are if-then statements. So let me show you that real quick. So let's start with a 9 p.m. front door lock status check. So this is saying if front door is unlocked, trigger happens at 9 p.m. So meaning if the front door is unlocked and it's 9 p.m., then it says using front door lock it. And then if I wanted to, I can also say send a notification. So the only problem with that that I see is if the door is not open or if the door is not closed, locking it's not going to do any good. So let's change that to push notification. Add a task. And then we're going to send push notification. And then the message we want to send which would be, would be your door is unlocked. Done. Done. And then we're going to save it. So now at 9 p.m., if it checks my front door and it's unlocked, it goes and sends me a notification, says your front door's unlocked. And at that point in time, I can go and see if the front door is open based on the app itself. And if it's open, then I go downstairs and shut it and lock it. Or I can, if the door is actually closed, I can go ahead and lock it from the app itself. So I hope that helps you out a little bit more about how to set up the SmartThings app itself. If you have any questions about setting something up or if you got into a snag when you were getting through the setup guide, Go ahead and put the comments below, or you can even tweet me at the DIY Read or Instagram the DIY Read as well. Um, but I'll go ahead and respond to them and help you out as best I possibly can. Uh, I've been doing this for probably a few years now, so I mean I've seen some issues before, and I can probably help you fix it or get you started with it. So, like I said, go ahead and leave those comments down below. Um, if you've already kind of you're not a beginner and you want to help other people out, go ahead and respond to them as well if you have the answer. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and then hit that little bell just so you can get notifications when I come out with new videos. So my next video, I'm gonna go ahead and start out with the Ring Pro and what I really love about that and how it automates with the SmartThings app as well. Until next time, I'll see you later.